Ceramic Speed claims that if you upgrade your drivetrain to all of their components, you will save between 10 and 16 watts on race day, netting you up to six minutes of savings over a 70.3 bike course. But is that real or is that just marketing BS? Let's find out. Hey everyone, I'm Eric Abbott, head coach and owner of Abbott Racing. This is Faster on Friday, a video series all about the gear and things that you can do to go faster on race day. Over the past three videos, we've been looking at the different components on a drivetrain. And now that we've investigated all three, we're gonna put it all together and compare our findings to that of Ceramic Speed to see if it holds up at all. Before we get to the data, a quick thank you to everyone who has commented on the previous Faster on Friday videos. Your support means a lot to me, so thank you. I have heard your comments about, you know, saying, hey, where's my own personal testing? Where's my data? Um, or looking for other sources of data beyond friction facts. I agree to all of that. I would love to do my own in-house testing, but unfortunately, that kind of precision um, testing requires a lot of money and a lot of equipment, and I just don't have either of those. And as far as having another source of data beyond friction facts, I mean, my goodness, I would love to have multiple independent um, data sources to turn to to try to get a better picture of what's actually going on. But unfortunately, as far as I know, friction facts is the only one that was doing this kind of testing. Do you know of anything else? If you know of um, people that are doing this kind of thing, please like send it to me, comment down below. Um, let me know what that information is and I will update the other videos to reflect any new information that I get. All right, with that out of the way, let's get right to the results. Starting off with the bottom bracket, it's pretty straightforward. It'll net you between one to like 1.8, so we'll just round up to say two. So somewhere between one to two watts of savings depending on what you're starting with. The chain is a little more complicated because it really depends on the state of your chain currently. Um, if it's really bad, really old, doesn't have any grease on it at all, you could be looking at losing up to 20 watts. So there's definitely some fringe cases where the watt savings could be really substantial. For this video, I'm gonna do what we did in our chain video and just assume that you're coming from a pretty average setup. And if you're going from an average setup to a race optimized chain, either one that you made yourself or one that you've purchased, you're looking between two to six watts. Finally, moving on to the jockey wheels, the most surprising result of the entire video series, saving you just one to one and a half watts. And that's with those oversized low friction wheels. So that's the best you're gonna get, one to one and a half watts. Adding it all up, we come to between four and 9.3, we'll just say 10 watts, which is sort of in the ballpark of what uh, Ceramic Speed claims between 10 and 16 watts. I suspect Ceramic Speed is looking at the very worst case scenarios going to the best case scenarios. And so they're kind of, that's how they're inflating those numbers, typical marketing. Um, but it does seem that their data is at least somewhat based on their test and not just complete crap. So that's at least nice to see. Now, what's really interesting is our data shows that by far the most bang for your buck is coming from that chain. Um, and the chain is the cheapest thing that you can do. So it really just highlights the importance of having a great chain for race day. Looking at bikecalculator.com, we can see that a four watt improvement will get you about 48 seconds on race day over a 70.3. And moving up to 10 watts, you'll save almost two minutes, which is not bad. That's definitely something to consider. Then best bike split. Um, reminder, best bike split only goes uh, by percentage. So I can only do like three, six and nine watt changes and not two and four, but Data's still good. Three watts will get you about 30 seconds, give or take. And then moving up to nine watts, you're looking at like a minute 30. I think it's like a minute 27 saved over a 70.3. So somewhere between a minute and a half to two minutes is the maximum that you're looking to save on race day with a full drivetrain upgrade. And again, somebody who's performance minded, somebody like myself, it's, it's not nothing. Definitely something to consider. But what do you think? Now that you've seen all the data, you have an idea as to how much it's gonna save you on race day. It's not quite as much as what Ceramic Speed claims, but I don't think that their claims are totally inaccurate, just a little bit inflated, but what do you think? Is it worth it? Do you have a full Ceramic Speed uh, drivetrain? Do you, are you gonna do the upgrade? What do you think? Are you gonna do it or not? Let me know in the comments down below and be sure to subscribe because next week we're onto a whole new topic. We're talking about tires and tubes. We'll see you then. Bye.